In my last video, I gave you 15 reasons why Sting shouldn't be WWE World Heavyweight Champion. And again, as I stated at the beginning of that video, I understand why people will feel that way. I can get it. I feel you on it. I understand. You have a lot of good reasons, a lot of valid points that can be made, and I made some of them for you. It doesn't mean I agree with you. We're just going to have to agree to disagree on this one. I think Sting should win the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. I want Sting to win the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. And just as importantly, I think the WWE needs Sting to win the WWE World Heavyweight Championship at Night of Champions. And, henceforth, as a result, I set out now to do this video and provide you with 15 reasons why Sting should win the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Let's we'll start off with number 15. We're getting ready to enter into NFL season. And we know what that means with Raw running up against Monday Night Football. That's never a good thing for the WWE's ratings when it comes to Raw. That's usually a bad thing. And already the ratings are not good to begin with for Raw. If you don't do something... How much worse are the ratings going to get once you're running head up against Monday Night Football and ESPN every week? I mean, Sting is something. You know, will it pan out? Will it bear out fruit in the ratings? It may, it may not. But it's worth a shot. You know, number 14, you look at Night of Champions. Similar to how the company has utilized Brock Lesnar in the past by having him work shows like Extreme Rules, and this year he did it at Battleground, not always just utilizing him at the biggest shows. This is an example here of doing that same type of thing, throwing a main event attraction, a huge name, at one of your second tier pay-per-views. Now, while Night of Champions is at the top of the second tier along with Money in the Bank and Extreme Rules, it's still a second tier show. It's not one of the traditional big four, if you will. So now coming off of SummerSlam, you needed a main event for Night of Champions, similar to maybe what you had with Brock Lesnar versus The Undertaker at SummerSlam, you at least had that in place. Well, now here with Night of Champions, you throw a sting in the mix, instantly you've got your main event. You figure out everything else from there. You've got your main event. And that helps that show, and it helps the build up to that show. Number 13, look at a show like Survivor Series, or maybe the pay-per-view after Night of Champions, either way, but I'll focus on Survivor Series. Let's say you want to have Sting win the title, and let's say you want to give him two months with the belt. Now you head into Survivor Series where you're building the show around Sting defending his WWE World Heavyweight Championship. You know, there's a potential big-time money marquee match again out of Sting. Again, giving you a main event instantly in place for one of your big four shows. If you wanted to build up SummerSlam so bad, you would hope that you would want to build up your second oldest pay-per-view that you have in Survivor Series, and you would want to make that show matter and that show significant. Well, having a Sting main event that show can most certainly do that. Number 12, who else is there? I mean, what, you're going to go down the Dean Ambrose path again? You're going to go down the Randy Orton path again? What, Sheamus? Oh, God. Oh, John Cena? I mean, yeah, ew. You know, I mean, what other viable, compelling options are there? Kevin Owens isn't ready for prime time. I'm making sure the dynamics of that will work right now. Cesaro, big fan, not ready for that spot. He isn't. A Seth Rollins Cesaro feud <laughs> would put me to sleep. Roman Reigns, while from a storyline standpoint, that would make a ton of sense. I've been frankly somewhat disappointed the WWE hasn't exactly went there. It's not like Roman Reigns is a hot ball of burning fire of momentum right now. You can't take him from doing this dumb crap where he's getting choked out by Braun Strowman to sitting there and having him feud with Rollins over the freaking world title. So who else is there? You can maybe say Lesnar, but perhaps, based on the contractual situations and the limited number of dates he can work, why not use Sting? And that brings me to number 11. You've got Sting. Use him more. Not saying you have to use him all the time. I don't want you to run him into the ground like the mistake TNA made for years. It was great that they had him, but it wasn't so great because they used him too much. However, with the WWE, I don't want Sting to be a WrestleMania-only person. I don't want him to be Sting Taker. I want him to be Sting. I want him to work a little bit more. So you've got him under contract. You've got shows that can use him. The guy is clearly in good shape. He's taking it seriously. He is working hard. He's putting forth the effort. Get some bang for your buck out of the Sting name and the Sting likeness. Use him more. This is a perfect opportunity to do so. Number 10. To me, a Sting title chase feels different. It's a different type of guy pursuing the champion in a different type of way. You know, it, it feels different than the standard WWE World Heavyweight Championship feud, and I like that. 
And I think some of you, as this goes along over the next couple of weeks, will begin to like that too. Number nine, this makes a ton of storyline sense. I mean, here's a guy that debuted last year at Survivor Series and cost Seth Rollins' his match, screwed over the authority. Here's a guy that in a lot of ways could say got screwed over by losing to Triple H come WrestleMania. So he still got anger there towards Triple H, but especially Seth Rollins. It, it makes plenty of sense in this time, this day and age, where we complain so much about the lack of storyline continuity and how so many things don't make sense and how many, so many things are thrown against the wall and the company hopes they fucking stick. Here's something that actually should stick because, again, it makes a lot of sense. And it's kind of refreshing to have something that actually makes some storyline sense. Then we look at number eight. Seth Rollins gets to work with Sting. I want you to think about this for a second. It's one thing if Seth Rollins is a champion. It's another thing if he gets to use Triple H's finisher, the pedigree. But they've decided that the second person that Sting is going to wrestle in the WWE is not John Cena. It's not The Undertaker. It's not Brock Lesnar. It's not Bray Wyatt. It's not anybody else. It's Seth Rollins. They didn't bring Sting back into the Wyatt family shield remnants feud. They brought him at Seth Rollins. That's a statement for Seth Rollins, in my opinion, saying that the company believes in him, regardless maybe what the ratings suggest. They believe in him. They're behind him. And after Triple H, he's the guy that they wanted to work with, a freaking legend. The icon Sting is going to be working with Seth Rollins. That is a huge statement for Seth Rollins and Seth Rollins' work and Seth Rollins' character and Seth Rollins' career. And a lot of you should take that as a huge compliment because I'm sure Seth Rollins does. You know, I look at it from the outside and say, that's a tremendous compliment. They're just not going to throw Sting at any fucking buddy. They threw him at Triple H for a reason because it would make some sense. And they knew that Triple H deserved it. They knew Sting deserved that. Now they're going with Seth Rollins. And then number seven, if you're going to have Seth Rollins lose that title anyways, why not have it be to a legend like Sting? Yes, I know I've said before, it might as well be Triple H, and I would be down with that. But if it's not going to be Triple H, then why not have it be Sting? Especially if you have Triple H get involved and fuck over Seth Rollins, and you lead to a Seth Rollins babyface turn, and Sting is the champion, da da da. But the bottom line is, instead of having Seth Rollins job out to a John Cena, or job out to somebody else on the roster. He's jobbing out to a legend. At least if he's losing his title, he's losing his title after five plus months to somebody that really fucking matters. Somebody of significance. I mean, just think about that for a second. He's not losing it to a Hammenegger. He's not losing it to a second or third tier talent. He's not losing it to somebody that is worse than him. He's losing it to somebody that's a top flight guy and a huge name and has been an icon, huge star for many, many years. Number six, you got to look at WrestleMania 32. You got to imagine Sting's going to be involved now. What capacity? Who's he going to work with? I don't know. I would still like to see it be The Undertaker, but let's say it's not. But now, if you've got Sting and you bring him back and he loses to Triple H at WrestleMania, and then he loses to Seth Rollins at Night of Champions, and you get to WrestleMania, who the hell is Sting going to work with and why would anybody think he has any chance of winning? You have to legitimize the Sting name. You have to legitimize the Sting brand. And the one way to do that is have him win, especially in this case, winning the most important title in the freaking company and becoming that top guy, at least for the short term, because then if you head into WrestleMania, you have some doubt and some wonder, some question about whether Sting is going to win or whether he's going to lose. It's not so clear cut, cut and dry. And furthermore, it doesn't do a whole lot of good to send Sting into a WrestleMania again if he doesn't beat anybody, because people are going to be like, what the fuck is the problem here? Why even bother if Sting's just going to lose? So you need to build up that Sting name, that Sting brand for WrestleMania 32. And frankly, in my opinion, rectify the mistake that you made with WrestleMania 31, not having fucking Sting over. That was still inexcusable. Still inexcusable. Number five. Sheamus is the Money in the Bank winner, whether we like it or not. And most of us probably don't. Sure, you'll have the people like the gold standard 000s who think that Sheamus is awesome, and I don't even know why. But with that said, Sheamus could use something. Something that could really generate some legit heat. WWE needs a heel that could generate some legit heat. You know, a Miz can do that in one way because of who he is and what he does. But they need Sheamus to do it in a different way, in a way that he does. And one great way potentially to do that would be to have him 
cash in on Sting and become the new WWE World Heavyweight Champion. It would be potentially somebody else for Sting to work with. It would also be a potential option to get the belt off of Sting after you've gotten the payoff of him winning the belt. But it would also be a massive way to get some huge fucking heat on Sheamus. People want to talk about chanting, you are, you look stupid and all this other shit to his milky dumbass. Imagine what they're going to say now if he actually fucking cashed in on Sting. So... If he's going to cash in on anyone, why not have it be a legend so that way he's not having to cash in on somebody else that's a member of the full-time roster. That way they're not doing the job. You've got Sting doing the job. It's not going to freaking hurt him. And just think about it that way. Number four, and this is a big one. Everybody that could potentially win the title that is not John Felix Anthony Cena means that John Felix Anthony Cena is not winning his 16th world title in the WWE. For some of you, this may be reason 1 through 15 or 1 to a million. But Sting going after Seth Rollins in the world title means Cena is free to go after Rollins in the U.S. title, which means that Cena isn't fucking wrestling for the world title, meaning if he's not wrestling for the world title, he has absolutely zero shot, even though it's Cena, and you've got to imagine that we'll find a way to work this into the rule book. You know that he's not winning the title. It delays the inevitable. And at this point in time, while I know it's inevitable, I'm all for delaying it as long as we fucking can. Of course, I say that now, and they'll give us John Cena versus Sting at fucking Survivor Series until you stick that in your fucking pipe and smoke it, Schlag Daddy. Oh, shoot me then. Number three, merchandise. You gotta know Sting moved a lot of merchandise when he first came back on the road to WrestleMania 31. So now you want to move more merch with Sting. What better way to do that, honestly, than to have him be the WWE World Heavyweight Champion, to have him be that top guy? I mean, what, what better way to do that than to sit there and have him be the champion? Now you can release merchandise with pictures of him as the champion. You could release a whole new line of merchandise. We know the WWE is very merch motivated. And they make a lot of money from their merch. And you want to make sure that you protect the assets that can produce a lot of money from moving their merch. You know Sting can move merch. And I will certainly assure you, if he wins the belt, he's going to win, move a lot more merch than Seth Rollins continuing to be the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. That's an inconvenient truth for a lot of you, I'm sure, but you have to acknowledge that that's probably accurate. Number two to me, and this is a huge one as well, is... Something we don't see a lot and something I wish we did see a little bit more in wrestling is that veteran trying to hang on type of story or that one last shot of glory story, kind of like you saw in the movie Balboa, where Rocky you know, ends up coming out of retirement. You had the big what if, what would happen if this guy, Antonio Tarver's character, faced off against Rocky Balboa, would Rocky win? And you ultimately got it. It was his last shot at glory. It was one more dance at romance with the top strap, an attempt to get it anyways. Well, here you go with Sting. This is the ultimate for me in terms of one last shot. This is his last best shot to win a world title. And this is his one shot he's got after all these years of never winning the title that he could freaking be able to potentially win the WWE World Heavyweight title. So not only would the story feel different because of it being Sting and how Sting would be featured, it also feels different because it really has that one last shot type of component with that, that old dog on his last legs trying to have one more moment in the sun, one more moment of glory. Well, some of you won't like that. Many fans will, and I know I most certainly can be down with that because I think that's something that the WWE has dropped the ball on and missed the boat on some over the years is incorporating that story a little bit more. But number one, the single most important reason as to why Sting should be the WWE World Heavyweight Championship and win that belt at Night of Champions is because he's Sting and he fucking deserves it. Plain and simple. Don't like it, blow it. It's really that simple. This is a guy that's dedicated two and a half, almost three decades of his life to professional wrestling, has given a lot to professional wrestling, has made a lot of money in professional wrestling, has done a lot of great things in professional wrestling. The one thing he's never done is held the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. A lot of his fans want to see it happen. I know I most certainly want to see it happen. I think, frankly, a lot of the workers in the company, probably whether they'll admit it or not, want to see it happen. And it's because he deserves it. He really does. 
And I don't have to say a whole lot more about it other than the fact that he's fucking Sting. I mean, Jesus H. Christ. If Great Khali could be a world heavyweight champion in that damn company, if Dolph Ziggler could be a fucking world heavyweight champion in that damn company, if honestly, no offense, but Seth Rollins could be a world heavyweight champion in that company, or a CM Punk, or a Daniel Bryan, or fucking, hey, even a damn Randy Orton or a John Cena, then a Sting most certainly could be a WWE World Heavyweight Champion for that company. His body of work merits it. Where the company is right now, they need it. And as a fan, I hope for it. I want Sting to be the next WWE World Heavyweight Champion. And I hope a lot of you are on board with that. If you're not, I understand, but well, we're just going to have to agree to disagree on this one.